Yeah, I like my sense of it. I just saw somebody else post it. Yeah. His knees yeah. work for us. Mm -hmm. His knees work for us. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the June 25th morning. meeting of the Ulster County Transportation Council <clears throat> Policy Committee. Uh, we'll do roll call. Yes, thank you. Uh, I will um, read off the voting member municipalities. If the voting member present could please state the name Ulster County, Ed Pine, City of Kingston, Keith Phillips. Town of Saugerties. Oh, she's giving it. She's off. Thank you, Ron. We see you, Leanne. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Town of Ulster. New York State Department of Transportation. Alexandra Fairley. New York State Thruway Authority. Village of Saugerties. Town of Rosendale. Town of Lloyd. Here. Town of Platykill. Village of Ellenville. Town of New Paltz, Town of Woodstock, Town of Rochester. I'm sorry. There should be Town of Gardner 7 as one rural membership. Mary Beth Majestic. Thank you, Mary Beth. I will <laughs> update our roster with that correction. We have uh, the quorum eight members present. Thank you, Brian. Call for citizens' comments. Any citizens in the room have a comment? Seeing none. Anyone online, David? Uh, None that I see. Any council member comments before we start? In the room? Any council member comments online? Thank you. Item number three, approval of the February 2027 2024 policy committee meeting summary. Can I have a motion for discussion purposes to approve? Thank you, Gene. Thank you, David. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I do have a copy of the transcript here. If anyone wants to review. Any discussion in the room? Any discussion online? Seeing no Hearing none, so approved. Oh, excuse me. Any, oppo any opposed? We'll do it that way. Any abstentions? Okay, so approved. Thank you. Communications and announcements. New business. Item A. We're on item number five on the agenda. Item A. UCTC Resolution 12407, the distribution of federal fiscal year 2023, Federal Transit Administration Section 5307, 5340, urbanized area apportionments attributable to the city of Kingston urbanized area. Brian? We're asking for motions. I could do that when I was thinking we I get confused. I'm, the legislature has changed their entire way of doing things, and I get confused with how they're doing things. Every meeting. It, it, it changes differently, yeah, and, and by different chairs. Thank you. Can I have a motion for discussion purposes, please? Make a motion. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Ms. Walsh. Good. I need to have a second. Okay. Mr. Pine and second. I have a motion and second discussion. Brian. Certainly, uh resolution 2024-7. Deals with uh, federal fiscal year 2023 FTA 5307, section 5307 funding. 2024 Resolution 24 07 is federal fiscal year 23. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, and those funds are attributable to the Kingston urbanized area. There is one designated recipient eligible to receive those funds in the Kingston urbanized area, and that's Ulster County government as operator of Ulster County area transit. Uh, the dollar amounts that are generated in 2023 are shown in uh, Table 1 on page 3. The Kingston, uh, New York urbanized area generated $1,330,751. Uh, in 5307 funding, so that's funding that is fully 100% um, available to Austin County Area Transit. There's a 20% local share for the utilization of those funds. Those funds can be spent on capital or operating or preventive maintenance purposes. And that's up from 2022 funds. I don't have the 2022 funds in front of me. There has been a slight increase over the years until we get to the next resolution. There's a significant increase. Yeah, thank you. All right. Any questions? 
those monies are all spent in the city of Kingston? No, they are provided, um, if I may, um, they are provided for routes that essentially service the urbanized areas. And since most of the bus routes from the city of, from the county of Ulster for UCAT use Kingston as a hub, a uh, substantial portion of that service is actually attributable. So Shandaken to Kingston, Saugerties to Kingston, New Paltz to Kingston, all gets attributable to the urbanized area. And it's reported through something called the National Transit Database, NTD. So if you ever hear us use the acronym NTD funds, um, that's what that stands for. And it's a population and ridership based formula um, that essentially attributes these monies in terms of so the more passengers the more miles you run the more passengers you pick up and the density of the area you're serving affects the amount of money that you get thank you i got a question for you i was at the park and ride the other day and i ran into the bus driver for the cap mm -hmm. and he said they're taking people to bus to the train station in poughkeepsie how does that work for funding when we cross over boundaries Similarly to what I just said, it doesn't. The the NTD is reported into the city of Kingston. We have two services that run into the Poughkeepsie area. One runs through Rosendale to New Paltz and from New Paltz to Poughkeepsie. The other one runs directly from the city of Kingston to to Poughkeepsie uh, as well. And both of those funds, uh, the local share at least. As I understand it, the local share is actually picked up by either MTA and or uh, the New York State as total. So there's a zero county cost for, for some of that service. But we have to use different funding to make it work. No, we're so using the same. We're using the same amount of fund, the same the same type of funding. It's 5307 funding. Okay. Um, but it is providing essentially a train option for commuters into the city for Ulster County residents. Okay. Anything else? Hearing none. Any questions for anybody online, David? Uh, I see none. Okay. So with that, I'll take a vote. Any opposed? Any abstentions? So carry. Thank you very much. So we're on item B. UCTC Resolution 2024-08, Distribution of Federal Fiscal Year 2024, Federal Transit Administration Section 5307-5340, Urbanized Area Apportionments Attributable to the City of Kingston, Urbanized Areas. I have a motion for discussion purposes. So, uh, thank you. I'll check. I'm like, that's like correct. Close enough. Uh, do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Supervisor Walsh. I have a motion and second, Brian. Certainly, um, resolution 24-8 uh, deals with the same um, funding source, but for federal fiscal year 24. And it should be um, noted that in federal fiscal year 24, the FTA is now using uh, the Census Bureau's new urbanized area boundaries that were approved by this council at this table uh, several months ago. And um, so it's now um, has a slightly different formula in the generation of those funds. Um, and uh, this represents um, transit agencies most recent service numbers 2022 uh, reported to the National Transit da Database. Um, and that is a notable change because in, in previous years due to COVID-19, the FTA allowed transit providers to use 2019 funds because of the significant decline in ridership during the COVID uh, pandemic. They allowed us to use 2019 figures so that we could maintain um, decent revenue. So in uh, 2024, the um, amount of revenue generated in this urbanized area jumped significantly to $2,179,671. And once again, 100% of those funds are um, available to Ulster County government through Ulster County Area Transit uh, for purpose of capital or operating or presenting commitments. Any discussion? Hearing none? Online, right there. None from the line. Any opposed? Any abstentions? 
So carried. Thank you. Thank you. Item C for discussion purposes, UCTC of sub allocation of Federal Highway Administration Carbon Reduction Program Fund, otherwise known as CRP. Brian? Certainly. Uh, we want to provide an overview of our process for distributing carbon reduction program funds. Uh, last year in 2023, we followed the same process, and so we're just continuing that process in 24. To take a big step back, when the bipartisan infrastructure law was passed, uh, for the first time in quite a while, metropolitan planning organizations were provided a sub-allocation, a direct sub-allocation from their state DOT of that specific discrete funding source, the carbon reduction program. So if you look at the top table, those funds show a distribution in federal fiscal years 22 through 26. It's five-year program because that's the length of the bipartisan infrastructure law. And there are two funding sources, the large urbanized area and the medium urbanized area. Those are two census-based uh, areas where the funds are generated. So long and the short of it is that Ulster County Transportation Council has $998,000 in federal aid, carbon reduction program funds to distribute accordingly, um, as long as we follow the rules of the program as uh, outlined in the federal register. Those funds require a 20% local match. The only other caveat uh, regarding the funds, um, besides the rules themselves, um, is that medium urban funds can only be spent within the Kingston urbanized area, municipalities within the Kingston urbanized area. Large urban funds can be spent anywhere in Ulster County. Um, and it's just a, um, <clears throat> A peculiarity of the funding source because it recognizes the fact that the majority of traffic is in those medium urbanized areas, and that's where they want to see more carbon reduction efforts focused. So in 2023, we provided one um, award to the village of New Pulse, and that was to provide funding to the village of New Pulse sidewalk project, pin 8761.22. That was um, approved under resolution 23-06. Uh, we provide $116,000 in CRP funds uh, to offset cost overruns. And then the table at the bottom shows funding available in 24. So we, once again, we did what was called an expression of interest where I sent uh, a, a notification to all eligible sponsors, all municipalities in Ulster County notifying them of the availability of fund, funds and how they can be used. And we received two responses from the town of Lloyd, um, as shown at the bottom of page three of the agenda, for a request to offset fund um, uh, um, uh, cost overruns for pin 876255. That's a streetscape improvement project in Highland. Um, and the request amount in uh, carbon reduction funds is $192,000 to address those cost overruns with a required local match of 48,000. The total would be $240,000 to bring that project full. And the village of New Paltz, again, uh, requiring uh, additional funds for the sidewalk project due to, uh, I would assume, problems associated with inflation and cost overruns as that project uh, gets very close to passing the finish line as well. So an additional 160,000 was requested. Uh, since the, uh, actually it was before the deadline, if I recall correctly, Mayor Rogers submitted an amendment to that request, adding an additional 40 or $50,000. Um, 10,000 or um, To, due to, um, Another issue that arose regarding the relocation of uh, fire hydrants. So we have two requests. Uh, the way these requests are typically approved is uh, UCTC will discuss it with New York State DOT. If there are, are no serious concerns by UCTC members, we would very likely approve the use of those funds, um, barring any other requests or need for those funds. Um, if they are approved, it would draw down our large urban area apportionment uh, to zero. So um, 
Thank you, Brian. Uh, just, I have a couple of quick questions. Do any of the council members have questions? There's quite a bit of information packed in there. I hope it's, it's clear. So I have a couple of quick questions. One is, is that, as I understand it, Brian, um, you're using allocations from <clears throat> what, what portions of the allocations are you using? Large urban only. They're are you using all of them? That if we were to approve each of these requests, it would it would zero out, it would use up 100% of our large urban sub allocation. Through 2026? Uh, correct, through 2026. Okay, so every the council members should understand that, that effectively right. what this does is there's no large urban funds available. You're done through 2026. And, you know, you, at the very bottom of page three, I, I put the note, if approved remaining large urban sub allocation would, would be drawn down to 34,800. That's changed since Mayor Rogers has you would, had an amendment. You would zero it out. Correct. So in fact, the, the requests actually exceed the right. dollars available by roughly five to 10,000. Yeah. So we could be part of his request for amendment. And Mayor not. Rogers has a question. Mayor Rogers. Um, my request was for four times 10, so 40K. So that I misspoke earlier this morning yeah. when I said 50. Okay. So I guess with the 20% match, if, if we need 40K for hydrants, then we're only requesting less yet yeah, correct. $40, so it's real close. <laughs> 32,000. Yeah, so, so we have $2,000 left over. $2,800 tomorrow. Put up a sign, maybe. Can I ask what happens after 26? Will we get a new contract? We don't, know. we don't know. It would. It's up to Congress right. and whatever transportation, surface transportation authorization act, whatever the rules are. Right. That but is it typical for us to get a new contract? This is not typical because it's the first time the CRP program mm -hmm. has existed uh, under the the landmark bipartisan infrastructure law. I would expect. Um, I mean, if, if we do a continuation, the way. The Association of Metropolitan Planning Organization, national uh, organization, has indicated that Congress is moving just toward a, a uh, uh, I forget whatever the term is, they're um, just going to uh, reauthorize the same bill uh, in the next five years. That's what they're so for Congressman Chris. Yes. <laughs> well, Rosendale would sit in, Supervisor the walls, Rosendale would actually sit in the Kingston urbanized area. Okay. So you would be eligible for median orders funds, which monies have not been touched. Okay, because I did talk to Brian recently about sidewalks too. Yeah. So let me. The, so that's the first question, Brian. And the second question to the town of Lloyd and the <laughs> supervisor, you're here. Where are you on the design process for um, the streetscape improvements in the Hamlet? We are probably. We are almost. I think we're waiting for the last set of comments. That we've responded to to come back. So we're pretty close to getting ready to go out the bid for. Do you have an engineering estimate? Is that what, what's the request based on? It's based on the engineering estimate. Okay. And we've already cut the scope of that to get to there. So we cut out one whole section uh, along Commercial Avenue. Okay. That's all the questions I have. Is any of the council mayor's that? I being the new kid on the block. So if all the money gets allocated by these two um, projects, is that generally Good. how it goes, or is there usually money left over and you put out another request to municipalities for the money left, or how you know? Generally, what ends up happening is 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 one is is that these are projects that essentially have shortfalls, so they're existing projects. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're trying to make communities whole with respect to existing projects so that they're able to go forward. And it relieves the burden on local governments with respect to the cost of local governments. And generally what ends up happening when you look at the funding available to the county from all sources of funds, including large urban, et cetera, um, the only funds that we usually have funding available to call for projects is non, is all system bridge funding. Uh, and you were aware of that from the full from the full mm -hmm. Valley bridge system. Mm -hmm. um, but these kinds of projects, the, the, the small amounts of money that are involved, it's not something that you're going to see somebody sort of start a new project for. Okay. So filling in the blanks, so to speak, where the shortfalls is a is a, is a strategy that has been used throughout the Hudson Valley with respect to MPO's programming 
these carbon reduction funds. Thank you. Any other questions? Anybody online have questions? I've seen um... anybody else in the office in the, in the building? So no official action is required until we need to amend the transportation improvement program to add these funds to the tip. And actually the amendment would be an administrative modification. I don't, a, re, a full resolution may not even be necessary. So my, my guess, thank you, Brian. I think the, if I can state the intent of the council would be to move forward to programming these funds. Does anybody disagree with that? Anybody online? Okay, so we'll move forward to that for that programming and then come back to the council for any final approvals that are necessary. Because it's a actually look thinking back on the tip procedures, amendment procedures, because it's a new funding source, we would need to do a tip amendment right, that's what I to said. the town of Lloyd's project. We may not need to do it to the village because we already have yeah, that funding source there last yeah. year. So okay. that's very thanks, Tom. Minutia. So we need a resolution. So yeah, and we'll be back. we can. Yeah, we'll come back to the council, and uh, but we will. We can inform local projects unit that those funds are essentially pledged to uh, those requests. And we can you update us where we are on the medium ur urban air funding for for the city of Kingston? There, there is no request. For the city from the city of Kingston, have, they were considering sub submitting a request. They have a, a project called the Fox Hall and Flatbush Sidewalk Project that was a TAP award from several years ago. They've completed or nearly completed their design process. They have a sh funding shortfall of over four million dollars. I informed they were interested in applying for these funds, but I informed them since we only had somewhere in the order of $500,000, it wasn't going to make the project whole. And so we pledging the money for that project would um, essentially create an opportunity cost for every other. Okay. So we have no, on your expression of interest letter, there's no applications in front of the council for consideration Not for the use of this one. Correct. So I'm gonna ask council members in and around the Kingston urbanized area, uh, to take a look at things that may or may not be um, in their uh, in their line of sight with respect to the use of carbon reduction funds. Um, I may have a project uh, with the within the county for use of those funds. Um, so just be aware of that. And it's, it's we have not, not applied for these funds. The county has not applied for these. And I should also know, as Dennis um, implied. They don't have to go to an existing project right. on the approved transportation improvement program. They can go to other eligible activities. And we have been thinking outside the box in terms of what sort of activities those might be. Anything to facilitate or improve walking and bicycling are certainly eligible, as well as uh, electric charging facilities are eligible as well. Okay. So with that um, sort of... Uh to-do list for, for uh, those communities that are in the Kingston urbanized area. Um, I'll move on. Thank you. Okay. Item D, UCTC FTA section 5310 funds, Brian. Again, this is for information purposes only, um, making our members aware of the distribution of Section 5310 funds in the um, metropolitan planning area. In the late winter of 2023 and into 2024, New York State Department of Transportation issued um, a call for projects for the FTA 5310 program. Which is? The, the 5310 program is uh, a transit program called for enhanced mobility for seniors and individuals with disabilities, um, as described under under the uh, agenda. In the Ulster County Metropolitan Planning Area, there were no applications submitted during that call for projects. Um, and we were contacted very recently by 
our uh, transit administrator at New York State DOT Central Office, Tom Vaughn, to indicate that um, if these funds in 2022 go um, unobligated, in September, by September. By September of this year, they would be lost, not only to the to the region, but likely to the state. They, I, don't, I don't, even, don't even know if they have plans to reallocate them elsewhere in the state. So um, with that in mind, we have reached out to those individuals and agencies that have used this funding in the past um, and indicated to them that the funding is available. There's This kind of funding can basically think about this on a vehicle basis, it can provide funding for approximately two very small lands or one sort of 12 to 22 capacity vehicle as well. It runs somewhere right, right between 80 and $150,000. Um, to see if there's any interest in those agencies, um, think of these agencies as Gateway, ARC, Rupco, Grant Family of Woodstock, uh, et cetera. We've well, also reached to would UCAP be able to use those UCAP funds? UCAP is eligible to use those funds. They have not applied in the past for these funds. Because they do uh, have paratransit, right? Right. It's not a paratransit. It's light paratransit, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Litz, but it's not a paratransit. It has some differentiation between what paratransit is and mm -hmm. is required uh, and what these funds are used for generally. Mm -hmm. um, we have not gotten a response as of yet from any of those agencies, um, but we've indicated to the state that we would hope to have a response by no later than mid-July. Um, and if not, the state would move, my conversations with the state, Brian, have been they would move to recapture the funds and, and, okay. and pull them out at the state level, offer them at a state level. Um, uh, so it would be lost to the region um, or it would be used by other counties in the region uh, that have applications in front of them. Uh, not something that we want to do, but if no one applies, then no one applies. Um, so that's where we are at this particular point in time. Um, more importantly, there is money coming behind that for fiscal year 23 uh, and 24, which is not an insubstantial amount of money. It's also available as well. And we've seen no takers with respect to that funding. Um, we may want to mention progress of the human services coordination plan. We are engaged. Thanks, Brian. Why don't you take that away in terms of the human services coordination plan? Certainly. And I was going to provide this under project updates, but Ulster County is uh, under contract with uh, Transpo uh, Transportation Consultants to develop a human service transportation plan, which is a requirement of MPOs. Um, in order to receive this funding, we have to update that plan every five years. So this is a significant update. We've done considerable public outreach throughout the county, uh, meeting with senior groups and also uh, providers and clients of um, uh, human service agencies that provide these services. And uh, we're developing a series of updated strategies that will um, help uh, guide and target this funding in the future. Traditionally, since I've been here, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Dennis, I think we have only used this funding specifically for capital purchases of vehicles. That's all the funding this has ever gone We had a small allocation to uh, UCAT that funded some funded some um, neighborhood, uh, I guess I would call it door-to-door uh, -door service. <laughs> like neighbor-to-neighbor. Neighbor-to-neighbor neighbor neighbor neighbor. service, yeah. And we did also fund, that was through UCAT, and we also did through UCAT, we funded a new vehicle for the Office of Aging um, <laughs> and some funding for the Office of Aging work as well. Um, there is operating assistance that is right. available here. Um, so we do have that as well. But, you know, this is the lack of the lack of I mean, this, my opinion is the lack of uh, the request for funds is literally a reflection of capacity at both the nonprofit level and at the, the county level. We do have a couple of questions from online. 
So uh, I may open it up. I think uh, we have one from Laura Petit. It asks if it can be used for a nonprofit that runs a facility with eight to 14 individuals, or is there a monetary slash size requirement? It's so for mo mobility management and transportation focus is the requirement. Yeah, so if, if the individuals that you're talking about essentially meet the requirements of the grant source, which is they're either aged or disabled in some way, shape, or form, then the answer would be yes. The caution is, is that they come with New York State Department of Transportation oversight. So if you're not familiar with essentially that, that federal oversight, it may be very burdensome for a small organization. Right, and it has to conform to the updated UCTC Human Service Transportation Plan, yep. which should be approved uh, within the next four to six weeks. And we have one more comment. Uh, I don't know, Leanne, if you want to ask or if you want me to read, either is fine. Well, I'm just curious as to whether or not Ulster County Boys Club would be eligible. Uh, the Sorgates Club, basically, which is part of the Ulster County program, um, the vehicles. Um, that they currently have can only accommodate like 10 kids for trips. I'm just wondering if, you know, the idea of purchasing an, a newer vehicle, maybe something larger would be part, if that would be eligible. So if they would meet the definition of being disabled, then the answer would be yes. If they don't meet the definition of being disabled, then the answer would be no. Clearly okay. they're not eligible. Okay, no, they, um, I don't believe most of these would just be, you know, seven right. to 16, 17 year old kids, basically. The other thing I, the other thing I would think that we, anything else online, Dave? Oh, those are just the two that we had. So. Mobility management. Well, the other thing that we are discussing, um, which are consultants for the human services Coordinated transportation plan. I know I was going to get coordinated that. human services, <laughs> public transit transportation plans. I think yeah, it's right. a mouthful. Um, <laughs> there does seem to be an ability to combine these funds with normal fifty three oh seven funds, or basically normal transit funds. Um, and if you do that correctly, you can use this funding. If I think. Now I'm going to, the, the consultant will correct me here, but um, if 50% of your passengers are within the core, within that qualifying criteria, it seems that we may be able to put the funding together and use it in a much more robust fashion, but it's additive than essentially buying vehicles to stand alone. Um, so that's the first thing that's out there that we may want to think about where we are in this funding source. The second thing that's out there is the funding that we have provided in the past has been agency specific and project specific. So think of this as that um, Gateway gets a bus to, to provide service to a project. Rucco gets a bus, for example, I think Rucco got a bus to provide service to its project on Flatbush Avenue. They've also uh, applied for service for a bus for their quality in project. Uh, ARC, ARC has gotten several vehicles because they run a fleet of about over 100 vehicles that provide services to their houses mm -hmm. in, and around, in and around the region. But there are elderly and disabled people that are not serviced by agencies. So the thought being is, is that what you end up doing is you provide a much more, you're not providing paratransit service, recognizing that paratransit service is next day service. Paratransit service is also not something you can do on a regular basis. It's can you can cancel, the agency can cancel paratransit service. But we're thinking about the idea of essentially providing a much more robust uh, response service to those individuals that are outside of agencies and combining it with 5307 funds. <clears throat> I just uh, I jump in here if you from misstating that. Makes sense to me. We were just presented the option yesterday. Yeah. So we're still absorbing it. How about the veterans? Uh, to the extent that veterans are eligible to their own funding, 
they have gotten money and they have, I believe, an existing veterans bus, but mm -hmm. to the extent that they're aged and disabled, the answer would be yes. Yeah, and they've been a, a yeah. primary stakeholder of this planning process. Yeah, right, and yeah. the single, the bus or one or two buses they have is nowhere near adequate. They're yeah. turning people down, they're turning down requests quite often. Yeah, it's it's a question of, you know, you're only buying the vehicle, you're not buying the operating mm -hmm. the operating costs. So that's mm -hmm. a that's a question. But mm -hmm. yeah, they would be eligible if, if it's aged and if they're aged and or disabled yeah. or chase hip performance. I just like to uh, mention um something that happened to me personally when my father was sick and dying, we were not able to get UCAT to come to the house to pick him up to take him to uh, dialysis. And I'm sure there's people like you know, cancer treatments, things like that, that they can't really get on a bus or, you know, get to a bus. And I just feel like there's a gap there in servicing people that are a little bit more remote and can't, because it costs like $90 a trip to take someone to, like to, you know, the facility they got to go to. It could be five miles away, it's going to close to $90. But it would be great if we could have UCAT or another agency have a bus that, we do those kind of trips for people at a reduced cost, just, you know, I, I, I don't know. Paratransit yeah. would do that. But, um, we, but we don't have enough of that right now. We've gone to the private. And I don't know, I got a question about UCAT. Is UCAT doing more remote now or is it just still on the on the? So we'll, we'll get to that. We'll, we'll answer that question because we're going to talk about another study that we're doing. But we'll answer that question. I want to stick with this. Is there anything mm -hmm. more with respect to this funding source? I, I was just going to add, uh, in closing, the, the uh, one of the other major areas that we could consider spending uh, these dollars on is um, under mobility management, and that is an, an administrative cost for a, a person to work. Uh, and we don't know where they would work, where would they be housed, whether it would be a UCAT employee, a county employee, or work for another agency outside of the county, but an individual that would begin to manage these types of trips, all these different trips that are necessary um, and facilitating connections um, between the human service agencies, the agencies that have the vehicles, getting people to where they need to go. It's what a mobility manager does. Other larger counties in metropolitan areas that have mobility management. It's a service that I think we could benefit uh, from significantly. Anything else on this? So, um... We're on project updates, Brian, is that correct? Uh, other opens, project yep. updates, that's right. Okay, so we're gonna take the first project we're gonna discuss is the route optimization work that's ongoing, which gets to Supervisor Walsh's question relative to UK. Uh, last week, we held our first major public meeting associated with the route optimization plan. Uh, this project, uh, we have consultants Foursquare ITP under contract to assist us with um, the process of improving service for on Ulster County area transit routes and seeing if any of those routes, the service could be enhanced in any way. Um, so the public information meeting was just that. It was an opportunity to make the public aware that the project is underway, let them know what the purpose of the study is and how they can participate. Um, the schedule of the project will be to develop high-level scenarios that should be ready by the end of the summer for review. These will provide very uh, variations on the service that are currently provided um, with improvements. And uh, the next big step is to provide our consultant with some uh, baseline parameters um, that uh, they can begin to develop those, those scenarios under, and not the least of which is available funding, how much the county would be willing to fund um, beyond what uh, is currently being expended on an annual basis. Uh, and then we will begin to refine those recommendations as we go forward uh, from high-end uh, scenarios down to detailed level changes in service um, with the ultimate goal of providing recommendations that UCAT is willing and able to implement. Uh, to again, improve service. So the types of service improvements that we would conceivably be considering here are increasing frequency of service, increasing um, uh, geography of service area, and uh, potentially adding routes or potentially 
taking away routes if we find that they're unproductive or underutilized and reallocating those resources, the bus driver or the vehicle to a different geographic zone. And then finally, a new enhanced service such as micro transit, which is uh, typically um, this, uh, can be described as like a sprinter type van. It do doesn't require, the driver does not require a CDL driving that type of vehicle. It's a smaller vehicle and it would utilize a software component or a dial ride component and would provide same day service to individuals within a geographic area. Yeah. That could be the uh, an urbanized area like Kingston or it could be a large rural area. And to that, um, to address some of the issues that are out there relative to that is the need for a really hard look at the technology that they use. Um, so there is a separate consultant on the team that is a technology consultant that works solely within transit. Um, UCAT has several very effective transit programs that monitor their ridership, their dollar amounts, et cetera, et cetera. There's some of their dispatch work, but they're disparate. Uh, so the thought is to actually pull them together in a single overarching technological umbrella that would allow us to be much more efficient relative to, to dispatch. And that's really extremely important if you're going to run a microtransit service and it's also extremely important if you're going to run an effective power transit service. Um, so that's that's where we are. It's uh, both of these consultant teams, whether it be on one is Transpo and the other one is Foursquare, are highly skilled in, in transit and they're doing um, a pretty a pretty important job and a pretty effective job right now in terms of where we are in those in those studies. Anything else on that? So I would just, um, also, if you're interested in learning more about those studies, you can go to Participate Ulster. There are um, very informative web pages uh, that are, are up there. We will be posting uh, a recording of our presentation from last Tuesday, as well as adding what they referred to on the, um, on the Participate Ulster software as a widget. There will be a Q&A widget, so members of the public can ask questions and they'll get a pretty rapid response from uh, myself or the consultant team. And those responses will be posted on that Participate Ulster site so others can learn from the questions as well. So the interesting thing is, is we're also looking at what we call scenario planning. Um, what that means is where do we have in terms of resources, in terms of trying to figure out how much service we can offer given the resources that are available to us. Um, and that has just received a boost from the county legislature because they just agreed the last legislative meeting to allocate a percentage of the increase in the hotel bed tax to transportation. Now, remember what the numbers are, but I know they're over a million dollars. Um, so that's a resource that we didn't have before that we now have relative to our transit facility. And if there's one thing that's happened with respect to transit, particularly after COVID is it's gotten a lot more expensive. Um, so even though we have additional resources, the real question is, what does that mean? And you're gonna to start to see what this starts to roll out. You're gonna to start to see the cost to operate per hour and the number of hours you wanna operate. And that starts, starts to lead to decisions on a high level in terms of the amount of service you can provide and then where do you provide it? And the consultant has a great way of saying this. The real issue has always been the amount of coverage or the depth of coverage that you want to have versus how long it takes you to get a bus. So it really is frequency versus coverage and you sacrifice one for the other. And the major restraining factor here in Ulster County and statewide and nationwide for that matter is the ability to hire drivers. There's a shortage of drivers um, and we can throw as much money as we want at, at the problem, but we just cannot seem to fill the vacancies as they are. It's with every, every field. Right. It's, it's with every, it's, it's true. It's with every field. And it's certainly true with uh, professional drivers. Route 9W study? Uh, certainly the uh, Route 9W uh, mobility plan is nearing completion. 
We are behind schedule. We have a final draft that has been delivered by our consultants, Creighton Manning Engineering, um, that staff is certainly satisfied with, but we have um, submitted it to uh, New York State DOT Region 8 Safety, Lee Zimmer and uh, David Corrigan, our resident engineer, are reviewing it in detail and requested additional time to complete that review. So we have granted them that time. Um, I hope to have this uh, final draft plan published um, hopefully by the end of July. Rail safety study, David. We have a draft report. We'll be sending it out to the TAP for review shortly. What am I missing? Are, those are all the project updates. Oh, well, can we? Can you update the council on the Safe Start the Summer program and the rollout of the availability of uh, speed feedback? Yeah. yeah, certainly. There's a flyer here available um, at the front of the room. Uh, that outlines the Safe Start to Summer initiative. This is a um, cooperative initiative between Ulster County Executive Jen Metzger, uh, Ulster County Sheriff uh, Figueroa, and Ulster County Transportation Council and other relevant agencies, Ulster County Department of Public Works, not police approach. So there's a, it's a three-pronged approach that takes the traditional um, education, enforcement, and engineering components, the three E's of transportation safety. Um, there'll be enhanced uh, traffic enforcement for the first two weeks of July in cooperation with Ulster County Sheriff's Department, uh, local police departments are working with the Sheriff's Department to conduct enhanced uh, speed enforcement on local roads during those first two weeks of July. You may be aware that the, uh, the period between Memorial Day and Labor Day are considered the 100 deadliest days of the year on our roads. And that's one of the reasons why we're choosing to do enhanced enforcement during uh, the first two weeks of July. Um, we also have purchased, Ulster County Department of Public Works has purchased 20 speed feedback radar devices. These are devices that we can see on our local roadways as we approach for. Uh, the town hall here, they're, issued, they're posted throughout the county um, in, fixed posted areas. The new devices actually can be mounted and moved wherever we'd like. They just need a pole, fixed pole to mount them to. They have a battery that has a battery life of roughly seven to 14 days. And then the information can be relayed through Bluetooth or through the cellular network. And we can um, read that information on a daily basis as, as we're um, uh, getting information from traffic going by. Um, and that information can be compiled and will be also um, delivered back to the municipalities so they can uh, review the types of speeds they're seeing on local roadways where these signs are being posted. And then on the education side, we're also issuing a number of publications and social media bulletins uh, and messages regarding um, the need and benefit to drive safe on. Any questions on that? I mean, these are two very important uh, items, and I think it's you had something else, right? No, Mayor Rogers is in front of Mayor. How does the community get one of those mobile things in there? Your police department, the chief. The Employee chief. highway department. Or highway. Yeah. We're picking up ours tomorrow. Yeah, there's an email right here. Too. So on the on the sheet at the bottom of page one, ucradar at co.ulster.ny.us is a special email that will go, it, it may go directly to Commissioner Masterson or I was told that staff. if you have a police department, your chief should be asking for it. If you don't have a police department, you should contact the sheriff and he should be asking for it. That's, that's okay. 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 So the so, idea is that he knows where. Because they're the ones that are going to move it. And, and I mean, I'm, I'm being asked by my bike. So it's yeah, supposed, the chief is supposed to manage it. Or your in your case, you would have a police chief, and in some towns it would be the sheriff that's going to manage. And, and there's a little bit of special rules with respect to deploying them on state highways if we're working yeah. out. We were told you can't. No, we're working on it. Okay. So actually, right now we're we're for this program, we're working with our partners um, at Region Eight to develop a blanket permitting process that DPW is taking care of. Yeah. It's not a guarantee. Uh, the location has to be considered very carefully where those signs will be mounted. But 
New York State DOT is being very flexible and cooperative with us, posting them on state house. I could have sworn if any email sent was already approved. It may have been. I mean, okay. that information that I have is probably it's like a couple of days old, okay. so maybe approved by now. I could be wrong, but that's right. Yeah. Well, I know my highway got my highway superintendent called yesterday. He's going up tomorrow to pick up two of the signs. Um, we didn't involve the sheriff's department. I guess we need to because um, we don't have a police department. And, uh, you know, we plan on putting it on Dusenberry Road and uh, Jenkins Town Road because we're a little concerned about the Jenkins Town closure or the 32 closure. But mm -hmm. It was arranged for very quickly mm -hmm. and Great. easily. You may want to just CC Sheriff Perua uh, with any correspondence sure. you have. Just and, and the Transportation Council is going to be doing some of the work in terms of when the data comes in. Okay. Um, so that you can actually get the data yourselves as well. Mm -hmm. We're gonna, yeah. trying to make this data as transparent as possible. And Dave has been working on how that's going to work. Right. There's a useful report summary that's. Uh, Issue. Yeah, we, we've deployed a few of them, or one of them, I know of, I shouldn't say a few, um, that we've looked at that report, and it was, it's it's a really good snapshot that comes out of that report in terms of average speed, the volumes that are there, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we would hope that you start thinking about this, you run them in, they run in a passive mode or an active mode. So the idea is that you can actually run the passive mode to see what's out there, what's happening, absent feedback, and then with the feedback sign on, see what the changes are. Mm -hmm. um, so those are those are things that you can do, and you can actually do them back and forth. So you can run passive, active, passive, active to see how long it sticks. <laughs> uh, but it's a they're great little devices, and uh, and fairly reasonably priced. Mm -hmm. Uh, any questions on that? Brian, any additional? Oh, we have other discretionary projects. Right. right. Uh, no other information on project updates. Discretionary projects. The uh, New York State DOT uh, quietly announced results of the Transportation Alternatives Program on Friday and into Monday. There are three funding sources, TAP, congestion uh, mitigation, air quality, and also there's the, the statewide CRP funding was all bundled through the latest uh, TAP solicitation. As far as I'm aware, there were six applications that originated out of Ulster County. Ulster County itself submitted a proposal to do a new pedestrian signal on Washington Avenue. Uh, City of Kingston had a side, several sidewalk projects. Town of Woodstock and Town of Saugerties both had sidewalk projects that they submitted. These are all multi-million dollar project proposals for sidewalks. Um, I believe Marbletown had a sidewalk project, and I think the Town of Lloyd may have submitted We something. had a complete street project. A complete street yeah. project. Platic Hill. Uh, no, no, we have, oh, I don't know, no, Platic submitted. And, and Platic submitted as well. It, it's of note that the MPO doesn't actually review those projects that come out of the county, but we are providing a list. Unfortunately, I don't have very good news to report. There were no projects awarded in Western County during this week. Surprise. It was quite a surprise. I thought we had some very competitive projects um, that looked very good and ranked very, very well. And I thought there was excellent coordination that was put forth by not only Ulster County and the City of Kingston that traditionally have applied for a lot of these funds, but also we had some new applicants as well. Um, from the town of Woodstock, and the town of Saugerties, to do projects on the state highway, I might add. Um, and it was, uh, it's very unfortunate that those weren't um, awarded. I do have a question for New York State DOT, Ali. I'm not sure, so sure you have an, an answer this morning, but if municipalities wanted a debrief to learn why, what the strengths or weaknesses of their application were, is that something that DOT can make available? I can find out. I don't want to tell you yes or no and be wrong. I would say it'd be a great thing. I would think that they would have something like that, but I don't want to say yes. And then they're like, yeah, no way we don't. But I, I can check with them when I get back okay. it's after this. It's safe. Right. Thank you. And if if we once we figure out if there's uh, an individual to contact, I would highly recommend applicants to do that and to start preparing for the next round, which will be issued in a in the two to three year time time span, because there are TAP funds still remaining to be spent in Region A. 
Anything else, Brian? Safe streets for all, David? Uh, safe streets for all grant uh, program is uh, still open. We're working on our application right now. We're looking to update our county road safety plan uh, to bring it in compliance with the Safe Streets for All um, implementation funding program. Uh, the current plan as it exists um, is technically in compliance, so it can be used by municipalities to, to apply. We saw that with the city of Kingston did apply during the last go, go around. Um, we're looking to expand the priority lists though to each municipality so each municipality has a priority list rather than just the, the whole county priority list um, to try to make some of those local applications more successful. How much are we asking for? I know I put the application in front of the list. I think I have it in for, for 400,000. Yeah. It's an 80 20 split. Yeah. Uh, and you know, part of the reason why why it's so high is we're looking to do supplemental planning activities, to looking at um, road safety assessments as part of this work to build off of the work that we had done previously, update that data, and get something you know, going forward that is a little bit more comprehensive for all the municipalities and hits all of the requirements, um, for even including the optional ones. So this is the, the county has a process where applications for grants although uh, need to be approved by the legislature. This will be in front of the legislature um, this month for July, actually next month actually for July. Um, and then the application of the Anything else, Dave? Brian, you have anything else on project updates? Uh, no, just the last announcement under old business. Uh, the Ulster County Traffic Safety Board is typically scheduled for the first meeting is typically scheduled for the first Monday of every month. I have no agenda items for July, and a number of our members are going to be out of town on vacation. So that meeting is very likely to be canceled. Uh, if you are interested in learning more, you can just check the Ulster County Consolidated the Ulster County Legislature Consolidated Calendar, and it will uh, information will be posted there, or you can go online to uh, the Ulster County Traffic Safety Board webpage. So, Brian, I got off to a rocky start. Did I give communications and announcements? You did. Skip right right you're going to go right. You were going to wait, wait, and hit me over the head with one when I try to adjourn. Right? <laughs> well, we're no, we, I think we covered everything. Okay. I don't have any. Did, uh, Mr. Litz. Does the DOT have any inclination as to when Bridge New York and Culver New York projects are going to be, be announced? No. No. I don't. I'm glad there that, is not an exact answer right. for that. So, no. I'm glad the new process was supposed to streamline so we would have announcements yeah. by April 1st. You know, but they didn't say what year. Yeah, April there, 1st you're right. Was in. You know, that's why it's a technicality. <laughs> we leave it open ended. Yeah. No, I, we don't. We don't. I, I would hope soon. That was, so, uh, you know, that would be our assumption. I'm sure everybody else is eager to hear, but yeah. no, unfortunately, we don't have an exact date, well, and we, we haven't heard anything. We had four submittals on the bridge New York. From say that again. Down. Go ahead. We had four submittal applications put in from Ulster County. It was three. It was three. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was three. Yes. Anything else on communications and announcements? Before we adjourn, is there any additional information or discussion from members of the council online? See no hands or comments. Anything else? Any other business, Brian? I should just say um, for our next scheduled meeting, I have no agenda items pending at this time. Oh, okay. we meet, yeah. Well, the, the policy committee would meet in August, but prior to that, we would have a technical committee meeting in July. That day would be July 23rd if we do hold it. We may need to amend the tip. Um, so there may be a resolution pending. We also would like to have a meeting with local sponsors who have projects on the tip that were scheduled for obligation of construction in this federal fiscal year. I believe there are four municipalities, and all four are going to miss that obligation which is not good news for our TIP performance. So we need to have a discussion, whether it's formally through the, trans through the Transportation Council Technical Committee or otherwise, with those local sponsors to see what the status of those projects is. Um, as we go forward in the fall, we will be updating the TIP 
so that information will yeah and i think that if we don't have anything well i'm hopeful we will have something because i hope we have to program the 5310 money that may expire and that would end up if it's a new project would end up on the tip and we need that action to take place so that we could program that uh, or, or does that come through the state we go back to the state brian 5310? 5310. We'll need to program it on the, on yeah. the tip. I, I don't know if our so, we'll have to have a program by September or if we just need to make a decision yeah. prior to December. I think we need to obligate it by December so it needs to be programmed. So we, we would anticipate that you would be asked to come back at least for that. Um, maybe a very short meeting, uh, but just be aware that we may we may do that. Anything else? I, I have a question. I'm curious. What the staff's opinion is, and any of the other members of the council think about this type of question. So we're super grateful that we just received this funding to help us with our with our project. The challenge that I'm running into is that both of my local engineer, Renier and Larios, and um, Willingham, Andy Willingham and Matt Cow, they don't want to do the bid docs that they helped us create and navigate through the, the DOT process for the last many years, right? They yeah. don't want the, the head. They don't want to create these kind of bid docs and then they don't want to do the administration of that project. So I'm guessing what I have to do is then put out a proposal into the world to find some other firm who wants to take on this work, which would include taking their work product and making it as they Does that, does it sound like I'm interpreting my next thing correctly? You're saying that they wouldn't do the big docs after the yeah, they did the done. design work. They, yeah, they should they're con the bid under contract, they should be doing a bid doc. I don't know what your contract looks like. Yeah, but I mean, they're my local engineer, but I don't have a contract with them. Um, I pay them, I pay them for the thing. No. Yeah. So all of, I can say from the county perspective, all our documents that we hire, we hire engineers, all those contracts include um, the bid documents and, and the bid analysis as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and so yeah, I'm not, someone. I mean, I have numerous other projects that I would like to get them to do as well. So I'm trying to like pick my battles with my local engineer, right? I, you know, like every community, we got some parks money where the county was generous enough to share more of their ARPA money inside that project. Like that, you know, that project and design work is like 75% of the way done and I need the engineers to fix it. Like I, I got water and sewer projects. Like I have these guys way too busy. I'm sure they're busy with other municipalities as well. And they're just like, please don't make me do, you know, more of this project. Yeah. So, yeah, I think you know, maybe the thing is, is that, you know, the local engineer does the scoping for the DOT projects, but when it comes to design work, you hand it off to somebody that effectively has the responsibility of doing your bid docs. Otherwise, it's going to create, it, I, I see it as an issue. Maybe other people don't, but I see it as an issue. I, I think they're frustrated with the process. Yeah, very frustrated. Yeah. And that's, you know, this is money that we yeah. Yeah, we were just able to carry our production time for our health pay for the construction. Yeah. And uh, you know, a lot of these requirements. Because of this. Anything else? Thanks, Mr. Uh, Mayor Roger. Sorry. Anything else? So I will inter undertake a motion. On to adjourn. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. No one's opposed, I gather, and no one's abstaining from the motion to approve. We are we are adjourned. Everybody have a safe and uh, healthy motion to pass. Uh, Fourth yes. of July. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. So in my new role, what's my responsibility to my other six? Well, 